Hello, this is Nadia Yagorova Johnston. You're watching Sat TV. I'm with Ramesh from Hughes Network Systems. Hi, Hi. Nadia. So, what is Hughes Network Systems showcasing at Communicasia? Okay, hey, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Uh, see, Hughes, uh, we feel Communicasia is a big event for us. We are here every year, we have a big presence. And, um, and we've had a large presence in Asia for the last you know, 10, 15 years. Okay. Um, this year in Communicasia, uh, we're continuing on our improvements in broadband satellite technologies and what it brings to bringing services for, for the area. So what we're showcasing is two major products. One's called HX, which has been our flagship products for enterprise and for consumer broadband services. So we've got some new um, improvements in the technology for bringing faster speeds to support new applications like mobility and so on. So we're showcasing the HX 5.0 product. And hot on the heels of that is what we call as our flagship Jupiter product. And Jupiter enables high throughput satellite systems and we've deployed it in the US and in Latin America. And it's gonna come in, in the Asia Pacific soon. And also we've scaled down Jupiter to be able to do KU and C-band. So we're showcasing both Jupiter as well as HX. Okay. And the digital divide is still quite evident across Asia. Mm -hmm. How is Hughes Network System working to close this? Yeah, this is, um, you know, as we all know, satellite is perfect to close the digital divide. Yes. And that's because no matter how much people invest on terrestrial technologies, they tend to do that in places where the subscriber density is high. So there's always what we call as a black hole or the donuts where there's a continual requirement to use satellite to bridge the digital divide. And which is what Hughes has been doing is as we look at the way we develop our products, we're continually figuring out how to put more bits per hertz, reducing the cost per bit, and to bring affordable broadband to people. And we've done that both in, in terms of providing direct internet access to people through cellular backhauling for people and for bringing educational content to remote areas. And all of these together sort of bridge the digital divide. And we've done that very successfully in Malaysia, Indonesia, and India, and we hope to do that in other places in the region going forward. Okay, now you mentioned cellular backhaul. Mm -hmm. What do you think sir, the demand for cellular backhaul is doing for the satellite industry at the moment? Oh, it's actually, it's incredible. Um, you know, if there's one inexorable thing that's happening in, in Asia and in the, in the world as a whole is that everybody wants to have a cell phone. And if you look at, you know, the wish list of every, you know, poor or lower income sort of family, their first uh, wish list is a cell phone, even before they get a television or, or right after food, it's cell phone. So you know that growth is phenomenal. What's happening is that as people are doing 3G and 4G, uh, networks in high density areas, the requirement for more bandwidth for connectivity is happening. So all the technologies we talked about are, are relevant there because you're bringing lower cost bits per hertz. But not left behind is the very rural areas where t still 2G and 2.5G is being used. Case in point is what's happening in Malaysia with a network we're doing with a company called Majinusa. Case in point is what we're doing in Indonesia with Telcom Cell and with people like um, uh, CSM. These are very rural 2G small Pico cells for small villages, for voice and for low rate data. So I think it's a huge uh, market going forward, both for low rate 2G, 2.5G, and for high trunking 3G and 4G. Okay. And now, um, how is high throughput technology driving the satellite industry forward? Well, you know, I always say that the uh, satellite business today is at an inflection point. You know, and if you look at every business, it's sort of the business grows and then you come up to sort of tapering where the next great innovation essentially drives the growth and the, the curve goes up. And we're at that point now because of high throughput satellites and the availability of K-band spectrum. Now, this has been proven in the US, in Latin America, and in Europe. In Asia, interestingly enough, a company called TICOM, IP Star, invested in high throughput satellites, you know, over seven, eight years ago. And it's, an, it's based on KU band on the user beams and KA on the, uh, KA on the um, uh, gateway side. Hughes is now, uh, you know, using that capacity or through our partners to actually bring 
connectivity in Malaysia, Indonesia, and so on. So we're already using high-throughput satellite on our technology today. Going forward, I see in Asia each regional operator investing in um, maybe hosted payloads to bring specific capacity in regions. Um, Indonesia will have their own satellite, and Malaysia will have their own satellite, and they will own it. And we think, as Hughes, we're positioned to bring technology to these um, projects. And in places like India, we'll be a service provider using that and bringing, you know, high, you know lower and lower cost bits to for either for broadband access, cellular backhaul, for digital distribution, and so on. So high throughput is huge, and we're, we're uh, in the forefront of that. Okay, great. And what can we expect to see from Hughes over the next 12 months? I think, look, we, we're very focused on um, investing in ground segment technology to bring faster and higher throughput for lower cost to the end user. We're also focused on using the technology and bringing innovative services to the region, okay. be it for enterprise, for consumer, or for carriers. And we'll continue to do that in Asia and in the rest of the world. Thanks very much. You got it. Thanks.